You're witnessing the kickoff of Elon Musk's SpaceX conducting the first fully integrated tests on the Duo 247, paving the way for the upcoming 33 engine static fire test. More specifically, there are at least some partial cryo tests, which are tests where flammable propellant is replaced with a similarly cold cryogenic fluid that's pretty close enough to subject a rocket to the same thermal and mechanical stresses on the Starship full stack. And for Ship 24 and Booster 7's combined debut, SpaceX has loaded liquid oxygen onto the Starship. Then we can relatively see the frost line rising on B7 and S24. Meanwhile, on the ground, Starship 24 completed a bunch of separate cryogenic proof tests before its first test on top of Super Heavy. More importantly, Ship 24 successfully completed several static fire tests, each of which also functioned as a wet dress rehearsal with liquid methane and liquid oxygen propellant. Booster 7 had also passed several cryogenic proof tests. In that sense, it's unlikely that SpaceX had a great deal of uncertainty as to whether either prototype would be able to complete yet another test. Beyond the basic mechanical demonstration that Super Heavy Booster is strong enough to support a partially loaded Starship, which probably wasn't in doubt, it's likely that the main purpose of this first full-stack cryo-proofing was to ensure that all the systems required to fuel Starship on top of Super Heavy were working as expected which is no small feat given that Starship is both the tallest and largest upper stage ever assembled. To fully fuel a Starship for an orbital launch takes up about 1,200 tons of propellants or liquid nitrogen for a cryo-proofing, which is equivalent to the weight of more than two entire Falcon 9 rockets, and must be pumped around 85 meters up Starbase's integration tower. That requires thousands of feet of plumbing and a symphony of giant valves and pumps, all of which must work in concert without leaking, jamming, or freezing to fuel Starship. As such, the first full-stack cryo-proof was just as much or more of a test of the orbital launch site's launch-slash-integration tower and tank farm. However, that first test is just the start of a long process, and it's likely that SpaceX will attempt an increasingly ambitious series of tests that feature the full Starship stack over the next few days. The test campaign is expected to begin with the first full wet dress rehearsal of a two-stage Starship, meaning that the rocket will be fully loaded with thousands of tons of liquid methane and oxygen propellant and run through a simulated launch countdown that ends just before engine ignition. If successful, SpaceX will likely restart Booster 7 static fire testing and continue to work its way up to the first simultaneous ignition of all 33 of its Raptor 2 engines. If the pair survive the wet dress rehearsal and static fire testing, SpaceX could begin preparing the same rocket for Starship's orbital launch debut. Elon Musk has also once again emphasized that, as planned, the pair B7S24 is the first to launch into orbit. This is a future mission that I, as well as many others, have been looking forward to for the past few months now. Of course, if the unthinkable happens where the duo is damaged during testing, SpaceX could have some backup options. As Musk said, what really matters is that ship and booster production line is spooling up. He believes it's important to have a high production rate because it enables engineers to move on rapidly to test the next prototype after a failure. The company could choose to retire Ship 24 and or Booster 7 and move on to a new and improved pair, which could be, likely, Ship 25 and Booster 8 or 9. Already complete, Super Heavy Booster 8 has been sitting untouched at Starbase's launch site for weeks, making it uncertain whether SpaceX actually intends to test or use the prototype. Booster 9, however, is just one stack away from completion, at which point it will be ready to begin proof testing. The SpaceX CEO also indicated that each new ship and booster has incremental design improvements. For example, the B-9 features significant improvements that will make it more resilient to mid-flight Raptor engine failures. It could also be the first super heavy booster with no hydraulic system thanks to a new version of Raptor, the Raptor 2.0 that replaces hydraulic thrust vectoring with a battery-powered alternative. In short, SpaceX is continuing to gradually work towards Starship's first orbital launch attempts, and it'll be worth all the waiting in the world. In other news, Biden looks to Musk's Starlink to deliver promised internet access in Iran. 
Last month, Musk offered activists protesting in Iran uncensored internet access, and a U.S. State Department official said that the U.S. would also be taking steps to help Iranians connect. Without delay, Musk activated SpaceX's satellite internet service Starlink, and he said all he needed to get Iranian protesters online was to somehow install special terminals in Iran that could receive the signal. So far, Musk tweeted that only a few terminals have been installed in the country. More are still needed, and now it looks like the U.S. could possibly be taking steps to help with that. CNN reports that multiple U.S. officials confirmed that the Biden administration is in talks with Musk to potentially follow through on Biden's promise earlier this month, and actually help set up broad access to Starlink in Iran. However, it's not clear yet if those discussions will lead to the U.S. offering to pay for the special terminals to be set up. We have our foot on the gas to do everything we possibly can to support the aspirations of the Iranian people, one senior administration official told CNN. News of these talks comes days after Musk and the Pentagon wound down discussions over who should fund Starlink in Ukraine. Those discussions ended with Musk withdrawing SpaceX's request for millions in Pentagon funding and SpaceX adding a donation option on the Starlink service. For those who wanted to donate to places in need, Musk tweeted at the time. The tension with the Pentagon over Starlink funding is one reason why U.S. officials worry Musk may not be a reliable partner, with Musk suggesting at one point that he couldn't fund Starlink access in Ukraine indefinitely. But regardless of that tension, so far Starlink seems to be the U.S.'s go-to solution, with the U.S. once again partnering with Musk to provide internet service in another region rattled by violence. Actually ensuring that people in Iran get broad access to the internet doesn't end with installing the terminals, even if that's where Musk's talks with Biden led. Iran outlaws technology like Starlink. That's why providing internet access in Iran is considered a greater challenge than assisting in Ukraine. But U.S. President Joe Biden has expressed unwavering support to protect the Iranian people's right to protest. He vowed earlier this month that he would make it easier for Iranian protesters to access the internet and make Iranian officials pay for obstructing citizens' rights to protest freely. To help Biden succeed in this mission, once again, Musk has been called to the White House. But not everyone is ready to trust Musk in this sensitive role. At least one U.S. senior defense official told CNN, he's a loose cannon we can never predict. Sounds just like Musk! In any case, that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching and for all of your support of our channel. And if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.